Hey guys, uh, today we are going to cover and review and do an overview of the Epic Collection from Marvel, Thanos Quest. This is Silver Surfer Volume 6. Stay tuned. Alright, so the Marvel Epic Collection is one of the most genius things I've seen a publisher come out with in some time. So the idea is for Marvel to collect, and this is a trade paperback trim size, um, standard size of comic book, but to, to collect from issue one of volume one of all their main characters through the entirety of volume one. So a lot of the in with Onslaught, when all the characters were then um, kind of shipped off to the image creators to reboot and do new series of them, and then there's a bunch of reboots that happen all, after all that. That's all volume one, so it's a good from like 1961 through the mid 90s. But the, there's a lot of genius things they did here. So, excuse me. Um, as you can see, there's no volume number on the spine. There's just Marvel Epic Collection, title character, a little trim banner there, and it's the name of the book, which was Thanos Quest, and then a little image depicting the character or the, or the cover. On this one, it actually is the, the cover in that same color font and everything. So there's no volume number on the spine. The reason why is because these are released out of order. So yes, they're trying to collect from beginning to end of all these characters, but this allows them the freedom to release them whenever they want, out of order, if they will. So that's genius to me because <clears throat> I know like DC, for instance, has been releasing Golden Age era Superman, Omnibus, Golden Age Batman from like one, from the very beginning of the character, one through the Silver Age, through the Bronze Age to present day. Um, and that's all fine and dandy, but I feel like that's only aimed at one collector. That's only aimed at the collectors that want from beginning to end. Not all collectors like that. Some collectors just want to go to a book and, or to a bookstore or comic book shop and pick up one trade paperback and get one story. You get that with the Epic Collection. You don't need to know anything prior to these. Typically, um, there are obviously some exceptions and there are some times where if you do need to know something of like, what happened previous to this issue? It'll have some um, descriptions of that. So you can pick up one trade paperback and be satisfied. But also for the collectors that do want from beginning to end, they do have volume numbers on the back and they all line up and are mapped out in order. So volume five of Silver Surfer has not been released, but when it is released, it'll end with uh, issue 38 of Silver Surfer, as you can see here. Tells you what issues are included in this book. It'll end with issue 38 and then bleed right into this book. Now, volume seven has been released and it goes directly after, it directly follows this volume. And also these volumes will include other important issues. Um, like this includes the entire graphic novel, or I guess issues one and two of Thanos Quest, a couple annuals and material from Marvel Comics Presents that featured um, Silver Surfer. So you're getting like a definitive consecutive story of the Silver Surfer if you collect every volume of the Silver Surfer. Or you can just pick up one. So it, it appeals to every type of comic book reader and collector. That's the genius part of it. And they're released out of order. So you'll get some Silver Age Spider-Man mixed in with some McFarlane era Spider-Man or, or what have you. Um, you might get a volume from each era to appeal to different collectors. That way maybe collectors don't want the Silver Age. Maybe they just only want the more modern stuff. So this particular epic that I want to, the reason why I'm highlighting this is because this is one of the best books that I read last year. I'm not, I've never read this material previous to this and it really made me fall in love with the Silver Surfer character. This is pretty much Jim Starlin's um, cosmic universe is what is entailed within this um, run of Silver Surfer. So Jim Starlin had just came back from DC where he killed off Robin, killed off Jason Todd. He was the writer of that story, uh, Death in a Family. And he came to Marvel with a stomach full of vinegar and piss. <laughs> he wanted to do stuff his own way, kind of. 
um, way. He wasn't super happy with how things ended with DC. And that was all highlighted, let me get to it, in this first storyline that he was writing here for Silver Surfer, which takes place in Dynamo City. Let's see if I can find the first cover of that. Okay, here it is. Welcome to Dynamo City. So Dynamo City is DC. Dynamo City, DC, DC Comics. This is where, um, through the story of Silver Surfer, Jim Starlin was able to get all of his disgruntledness of how he felt DC operated out of a system. And not knowing that, this story is still great, but then knowing that and going back and rereading it with that lens is just fantastic to realize that <clears throat> this is how he's depicting how things operated within the DC Comics uh, bullpen, if you will. I don't think they refer to it as a bullpen. But even has Silver Surfer in these nice um, human moments like job hunting. I love this cover. He, he just in line looking for a job. That's the great thing about Silver Surfer is that he's able to do... He's an alien from a different planet. But when he comes to Earth, he's able to, or any other planet for that matter, he provides commentary for how crazy things are. With that, and how, how ridiculous people can be sometimes um, within the planet. So this one, he's through Dynamo City, obviously doing a commentary on how DC Comics works. It includes his game show, The Cosmic Extravaganza. But then when he's on Earth, he's doing commentary of like how ridiculous people take things sometimes and how, what's the biggest, what's the big picture really kind of thing. That's what I love about Silver Surfer is that he's just a perfect protagonist of social commentary on how the world works. Even in his emotional yet static nature. So that's the Dynamo C uh, City story. And that's kind of start, kicks off the Cosmic Saga. That's what kicks off the 90s Cosmic Saga. The uh, Infinity um, War, Infinity, I'm sorry, Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, Infinity Crusade trilogy really is birthed out of the Silver Surfer comic book. And there's, there's even some issues within this book where Silver Surfer doesn't really play the biggest part in it. It's really just like this, like even on this cover, this is a Silver Surfer cover. Adam Warlock's the main figure here. Silver Surfer takes a back seat. Um, it really was, I mean, might as well have called it, you know, Jim Starlin's Cosmic Saga. It could have been the title because there are issues where Silver Surfer doesn't take a big, big part in. Um, but it, it's just his vehicle to tell his cosmic story. And the great thing about this book, this collected edition, or epic collection, is that it includes the Thanos Quest two issue, I guess Marvel graphic novel is what they called it. So let me see if I can get that here. Yeah, so this, this is the beginning. This is the, first, the front cover. And that, that's, the thickness of that shows you the, how much of the actual book you can see the papers are different colored because the artwork bleeds all the way down to the bottom of the pages throughout the graphic novel and there's actually borders on the single issues. So you see how much of it takes place in the Thanos Quest. And Silver Surfer actually doesn't even, I don't even think he appears in Thanos Quest, the story at all. But it's important because directly before this, his story takes, you know, takes a turn. He leaves Dynamo City. The Thanos quest happens. If you're not familiar with Thanos quest, first of all, it includes incredible artwork from Ron Lim. Just some of the best 90s era comic book artwork you'll find. Like I just, so many interesting ideas he has. We'll get to some pages here where they describe the infinity um, gems. But if you're familiar with the infinity gauntlet and the infinity stones or gems from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this is where that story takes place in the comic books. This is Thanos' quest to find all the Infinity Gems and put them in the gauntlet. So it takes, it does, the goal is the same, I guess, as the movies, but the reasoning for that goal is a lot different and there's certainly different characters throughout the story. But if you have some sort of familiarity with how the uh, movie worked, you'll, you'll enjoy, like, look at this, this haunting image. 
you'll really enjoy this book, I think. And I think it's an issue too where he does the portraits of Thanos describing each of the infinity, infinity gems. Where is it? Okay, come on. Here it is, okay. So this is where you, he <clears throat> starts describing all the infinity gems, explaining what they are and what each gem is responsible for. Um, as you can see that they're all right here. And Ron Lim just does this incredible and creative job with describing each gem with a portrait of Thanos. I just can't, some exploding guts there. Definitely uh, can be uh, R-rated at times, I guess, in terms of violence. Um, but yeah, this is just incredible epic collection. And then it goes right into the Infinity, uh, builds up the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. From there, like the next issue after Thanos' quest is Silver Surfer and him trying to stop Thanos throughout it. And then you meet Adam, or Adam Warlock returns, I guess. Galactus comes in to play. And then it finishes off, I think that's the last issue, right? And the last issue is a giant size 50th issue of Silver Surfer. And even though this image in the, within the comic book, it looks really kind of crappy, um, I'll admit, but that's because this was a holographic chrome foil, I guess it was back in the day. Um, Cause it was the nineties and they have gimmicks for covers like that. I mean, I guess they have gimmick variants now, but they really were gimmicky with the, uh, the medium they're using back then. There's even got a Fred, or is it Fred Hinbeck? You can really uh, make itself sound like a fool. Whatever, you get a Hinbeck. Hi, hi, oh yeah, Fred Hinbeck, okay. Fred Hinbeck doing a little uh, strip on, on Thanos, which is fun. And then some back matter profiles on Jim Starlin and Ron Lim. And then they, a little catalog of which volumes have come out. You can see like, so Incredible Hulk at this time in this collection, they've since come out with more volumes, but the way they released them was volume one, two, 19, 20, 21. So they'll, even though they're doing different eras, they will do a thing where it's like 19, 20. And it, it's great to fill in gaps like that. And just real quickly, just to show you how beautiful these spines are. So these are Fantastic Four books I have. Um, here's four of them. Uh, volume 17, 18, uh, 19 has not been released yet, and then 20, and then 21 hasn't been released, but I haven't got my hands on it yet, and 25. So it even kind of creates that fun uh, uh, moment when I'm, like, I'm just waiting for volume 19 to come out, because then I'll have all the John Byrne era from the omnibuses into 17, 18, 19, 20, and then 21. Like, I'll have all the era of Fantastic Four collected, and Fantastic Four is my favorite Marvel book. So I am trying to collect everything in collected editions. But the spines line up nicely. The titles, all the characters will have their own signature color. So Fantastic Four is blue. And you'll get different designs down here of pictures. But they all match and line up like great on a shelf. And even when you have them out of order, the volume numbers don't look ugly. It doesn't look like you have like 17, 20, you know, 19, like all out of order. Even though they haven't been released yet. But if the volume numbers are important to you, they're on the back. So that's a Marvel Epic Collection, and more specifically Thanos Quest, a fantastic collection. If you want a, a fantastic first Epic Collection to own, I think this is the best one to go. It's nice and thick. All these, all the Epic Collections are run like four, 400 to 500 pages, I believe. Um, I don't know. I think this one's one of the skinnier ones, volume 25. And it has no page numbers. Okay, well, I don't know how many pages this is. But um, they run like 350 to 500 pages, so they're all nice and thick. They, all, they usually will include like 16 to 20 comic book issues within them. So great price point, um, or great value. The price point for like this one in particular is uh, 39.99 in US dollars. But you can usually find it for like 20 bucks on secondary markets, or not secondary markets, sorry, on uh, places like InStock Trades or Amazon. And then sometimes on the secondary market of eBay or uh, half price books, you can find them for like 20 bucks too. Um, if you find them for any, anything cheaper than 20 bucks, I think it's a, a steal. Like I found some for like 10 bucks before at secondhand stores and they're just such good quality books. And um, I guess I didn't mention this particular collection is on this newsprint matte feel to it, which some people don't care for, but 
I think it looks so much better. The artwork looks so much better on this matte paper than it would on gloss day, so I'm, I don't mind it. That's newsprint ish, if you will. I don't think it's exactly newsprint, but um, yeah, so that's uh, Thanos Quest, Silver Surfer, Epic Collection. Make sure you like and subscribe, and comment down below if there's a uh, particular Epic Collection that you recommend to me or you want to see me do an overview of or review. I'll be happy to do that.